What it do, Jules Crew? What it do? What it do? What it do? Your girl is back. Back. Baby, back. With another video. And yes, y'all, I know I've been gone for too long. Um, I'm trying to get back into the cope of things because, as y'all know, last year I was pregnant. Had a hard, hard pregnancy. And then I'm a first-time mom. My baby is almost four months. He's currently sleeping right now in my room as I'm in the next room. So, yeah, we're going to try to get this video done while she sleep. This is going to be my birthing story, what I went through from beginning to end, how long it took, the process, just everything. I am going to have clips in here of real footage, but I'm going to have it like, blur it out or whatever because y'all know YouTube do you can't do too much and I ain't trying to show too much anyway but I'm gonna have pictures and everything of her and if she wakes up she's also gonna be in the video so um her birthday is December 2nd 2023 yes I did not want a December baby but it is what it is I have one I have a December Sag I do but I love her you know I just she could have been a November Sag, but it is what it is. It is what it is. That's her birthday. So, um, I had her at 30, 39 weeks in like two or three days. Her due date was December 5th, and I had it December 2nd. So, and I was induced at 39 weeks in two days. So, it took almost two days to have her. Do you understand me? I went in Wednesday night to get induced, and I had her Friday morning at 7.29 a.m. Almost ended in a C-section, but that's one thing I pray to God and thank God that that didn't happen because I did not want a C-section. Only thing that was going to be good coming out of a C-section was I was going to get paid for two extra weeks. But the healing process, I was not trying to do it. I just didn't. Mm -mm. You couldn't open 33 layers. My, mm, you can't know. That's not how it go down. No. So, let's start. I went in at 11 o'clock. Mind you, I had a panic attack every day leading up to it. Like, for three days, I had a panic attack because I was terrified to give birth. Period. I don't know who is not terrified. And it's your first time, too. I was terrified. So, and then I was getting induced. So that was the only good thing I was looking forward to because I was already going to be in the hospital when my labor started. So if I wanted drugs, mind you, <laughs> I wanted drugs. I wasn't one of the moms that was like, I want to do it naturally. Power to you. Power to you. Because it wasn't me. It couldn't be. I'm sorry. I needed all the medication, all the drugs to uh, get me through that process because I was not doing anything naturally. That was never the plan. So I went in, and as I went in, I was zero centimeters dilated. She was not ready. She did not want to come. People that don't like to get induced, I, I was ready because, like I said, my pregnancy was hard. Hard. So I was ready for her to come out. Because um, as y'all know, I had her, I got pregnant seven months after having the gastric sleeve. So I was still healing from that. Then I got pregnant, and that was a whole process on its own. So, I go in at 11, go straight in. They give me a pill. Um, some people say they insert the pill into their vagina, but they made me put it under my tongue for 20 seconds, and after 20 seconds, um, just swallow the rest or whatever, let it dissolve under my tongue for a couple of seconds, and then swallow it. And I got my contraction starting, and they was giving me that. They was going to give it to me every four hours they were going to check me after four hours and see where I was so after the first session it was about 11 30 uh, p.m. on a Wednesday night when they gave it to me and they came back four hours later and they checked me and I was a half centimeter dilated so they gave me another one 
and that one amped up. Mind you, at that point, I was already contracting like two to three minutes, but they wasn't bad. They wasn't bad at all. Um, but it was every two to three minutes they were coming. And so after the second pill, they started coming. They were still coming two to three minutes, but they were getting worse because I guess the second pill amped it up. They amped up the um, the contractions, the pain-wise. So I say about 7 a.m. Thursday morning. I said, I know y'all can't give me the epidural, but give me give me whatever y'all can give me before that. Um, so they gave me something in my IV that, uh, mind you, I have bad veins. It took them forever to get an IV in my arm. Like, I think they poked me five or six times because my veins move and they're just not there. So, um, they gave me something and it kind of made you feel drunk. Like, it makes you feel drunk. I don't know what it is, but it helped with the pain. So, I was good for a few hours. But then, they came in there after, and I was only one centimeter dilated four hours after taking the second pill. And I guess it, the process was moving a little too slow for them, so they gave me the balloon. They told me they were going to have to put, and this is the part I did not want. This is the part I did not want. So around 8 a.m., 8 or 9, they put the they put the balloon in. Um, I was already still in pain from clearly the contractions. They were coming back to back to back to back to back. So they put the balloon in, but I had already asked for the epidural. I said, y'all can go, if y'all can, can y'all go ahead and give me the epidural? Like, I don't care about none of that. I don't want to wait into nothing and they was like okay cool so they put the balloon in and they blew it up and it did hurt it didn't just hurt it didn't it wasn't just the worst pain but it did hurt but they didn't blow it up all the way i'm guessing so they put it in they blew it up a little bit and then the epidural man came in my parent my mom and my boyfriend at the time had to leave they had to leave the room so I was just with the nurses. I couldn't have my mama hold my hand. I... Sorry, I was listening for my baby. But yeah, I can't have my mama hold my hand. I want to hold my mama's hand. So I was holding the nurse hand. Hold on, y'all. Let me go check. Okay, my bad. She good. Had to go check on the baby. Mom first all day. So... The, I'm holding a lady. She's telling me not to move. I'm like, girl, I know not to move. Anybody trying to be paralyzed from this? But I need it. So, it's going with the process. Going with the process. He's doing it. And then as bad as I thought. But then after he, I don't know what part he put it in, but my, my right leg started jumping on its own. Like the nerve. He was like, he tried to stop moving your leg. And I'm like, that's not me. Like, I'm not doing that. Like, I don't know what's going on, but it just kept jumping. And I'm like, he's, you know, trying to control it. I don't know how it's moving on its own and I'm not moving it. How am I going to try to control it? I said, sir, sir, again, I tell you, mm -hmm. I'm not doing it. He was like, okay, okay, we're almost done. We're almost done. He was like, all right, it's in, it's in. Ooh, dude. That thing right there was a gift from God. Because I didn't feel nothing no more. Mm -mm. I just laid there. And I was ready. I was. Mm. But then you know you can't get no sleep in the hospitals because every three seconds they're coming in and checking something. It's somebody coming in to check this. She coming in to check that. Ooh, doo, doo. So after I get the epidural, I lay back down and they're like, okay, we got to blow up the balloon some more. I was like, what you mean some more? Then they had to put a catheter in because you have a epidural. You can't really move your legs. You can't walk. So they put the catheter in. Cool, I ain't feel that because I did not want to feel that. Um, but then they blew up the balloon. It was like they only blew it up 30%. Now they blew it up more. So they kept the balloon in for about four or five hours. And then I guess it came out by itself. And when it came out, I was about five centimeters dilated. 
So they was like, okay, cool. So I guess they gave, put me on Pitocin after that and amped it up. I guess amped up my contractions, even though I really didn't feel it. But they had a button that I can press every few hours or whatever, just in case I do start feeling a little pain. And they, I guess that machine gives me a little bit more into my um, epidural or whatever. So I was good for the most part. But I went dilating after them five centimeters. I stayed five centimeters for a long time because I thought I was going to have my baby that Thursday. Again, I had my baby Friday morning. So I went hours and hours on the Pitocin, even them, me contracting every few hours. I mean, so much. And after every few hours, you know, I was barely moving. Like, I think by 11 p.m. that day, night I was at like six and then hours later I was like around two two or three I was at like seven but I think my process was moving too slow for them because the lady was kind of telling me basically like if you don't dilate anymore any quicker you're gonna have a c-section and I was just like yeah that ain't happening I don't care what y'all say so we're gonna have to wait until this 10 centimeters cup so, again, they're just giving me Pitocin, amping it up, amping it up, and nothing's happening. So, they cut it. They lower the dose all the way. So, after they lower the dose and basically start my body over, because I guess my body was getting used to it, that it wasn't progressing. So, they started me over, and I was just like, okay. So, they gave me a lower dose, and then they went back up with it. And I still wasn't really doing anything. But around 7 in the morning, she checked me. And she was like, okay. She was like, you're at 9 centimeters. And I was like, okay. She was like, here's, I'm going to give you two options. And I was like, all right. She was like, you could do some practice pushes. And see, because she said her head is small. So you can do some practice pushes and see. Or... You know, you can, I guess, wait till you get to 10. I was done at that point because the contractions started being in my booty. Like, I didn't understand that. Like, it wasn't in my vagina, it wasn't in my stomach, and wasn't in, it was in my butt. So every contraction was in my butt. And I told her that. She was like, yeah, that mean, you know, you're ready. You're ready to push. We'll do. So I said, okay, let me do a practice push. She was telling me how to do it. Like, mm, act like you're pooping. and da -da -da. Yes, I did poop. I did oops because they told me I couldn't eat but I was sneaking and doing it anyway and I did not care follow your doctor's rules I just couldn't do it because who won two days without eating and all you're drinking is well I'm not drink no I'm drinking what I want to drink now I didn't eat like that but I did eat a few fries here and then some stuff there and then spread apart okay but listen to your doctor so she telling me, I do one little set of pushes. And she said, wait, wait, we got to go get the doctor. The head's, the head's coming out. I said, I looked at her. How you going to tell somebody to stop pushing? My body was automatically pushing by itself. A body knows, you know, what to do for itself. So every contraction, my body was pushing on its own without me doing it. She was like, we need the doctor. Your doctor's on the way. I said, do y'all have another doctor? Because I said, I'm not about to start pushing because a doctor. Because, baby, they don't do nothing anyway. We just try to, they need to be in there to get their check. And I'm trying to get this baby out. I'm not waiting for no doctor that's on the road. I'm not doing it. Find another doctor. So they're like, okay. So an, uh, a, a doctor come in there, a black lady. I think she in there for three seconds before another doctor come in there. So I'm pushing. I think my push is on. I only did like, I was only pushing for maybe 10 minutes. I did a few pushes. And I was good at first. You know, I wasn't screaming. I wasn't yelling. I was just pushing. My mom was getting aggravated. She was on the side because they was telling me to wait and push. And she was like, my baby's in pain. She was about to cut somebody out. And then my boyfriend, he wasn't holding my legs. He was on the side sneaking videos like I actually asked him to do. So, yeah. So she over there. And I'm just pushing and pushing. And the lady going to look at me and say, 
don't scream, baby. My job wasn't screaming. She said, don't scream. It's, it, it's going to take, you know, some energy away if you just push and don't scream. Now I looked at her. Every push after that, I was screaming to the top of my lungs. Like, I was like, why would you tell me not to do something? Then I go and do it. I was good before you said, don't say nothing. So every push after that, I'm... And then she comes out. But then my baby's not a cry baby, so she's sitting up there not crying, really. So I'm like, is my baby okay? Is my baby okay? They're like, yeah, she perfectly fine. I'm like, why she ain't crying? They was like. So she did a little cry for like two seconds, and then she just stopped. Because my baby ain't really ever just been a cry baby. So I was like thinking in the movies, like, the baby's supposed to be like, hey. Negative. All she got was a win. Baby, long as she was all right, born and healthy. She was 7.42 pounds. Ounces, pounds. Pounds, 7.42 pounds. Uh, 22 inches, I think. And... White as heck. White as heck. And then when I first got her, because they didn't just give her to me. They took her because they said I had a fever, uh, a fever at the time that I had her. So I had to get medicine for that. I don't know if she had to get medicine for that. But, like, we didn't do that chest-to-chest -chest thing like I really wanted to or whatever. But, yeah. Um, I did. She did cut me. But they said it was just a minor tear. Like, um barely she didn't just rip me open she did like a little tear so that was cool i guess for my first baby they was like that was good i did good i didn't have to push for long yeah and then i got the whole my list thank you for it i'm gonna be putting videos and um pictures in in between this stuff right here like her first bath and she was just so cute and she has she had the biggest, darkest, gray eyes. Like, if y'all know me, I love colored eyes. And I never thought my baby would have none. They say they're probably going to change by the time she's one. But hopefully they don't. Because they're still... Right now they look like grayish hazel. Like light brown, gray. But they're still majority gray. So, we'll see. But, yes. That's my story. These are the clips. The clips is going to be in here somewhere. I didn't put them in here already. Most likely. Yep. They will do do. So, yeah. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Because I'm glad it's over. And who keeps talking about more kids? <laughs> Not this one. If I ever, ever decide to have more kids, baby, it's going to be the three to four years when I'm 30, 31. Because if y'all know, I'm 27. I had my first baby when I was 27. I think I did good for myself, you know, I went to school, got a good job, make money with my man. We good. So, yeah. Deuces. We going no way but up. I am back, y'all. I'm about to do more videos, more turnt videos, choose the drink videos, all that. We about to get it done. Deuces. So, mom was just woke up. I was trying to show y'all my body, how I look after having her for like four months. Look at the mama. Hey, the mama. Say hi, mama. She's my beautiful baby girl, Jalea. See? What? That's me. See y'all in the next video. About to go tend to my baby. Deuces.